James Wesley Rawls, expert on preparedness. He's written the book, How to Survive the End of the World as We Know It. Not the end of the world, the end of the world as we know it. World War II killed over 100 million people, including 20 million Germans in that collapse. Demo side, governments killed over 260 million people in the last century. Government is the number one cause of death, and government collapse is, well, the biggest for the Ukrainians and others. All right, the 12 minutes we've got left, you got the floor. You want to get into preparedness? Let's get into the best firearms training uh, areas and then basics for people that do live in cities. If, if somebody can get to the country, uh, you know, uh, give us the top 10 list of what to do to get ready, uh, Mr. Rawls. Well, I'd say even ahead of firearms, it's important to have a, a good quality water filter, like uh, either a compact catadine filter or for your house, a big uh, ceramic filter like a big Berkey. Water filtration has to be the very top of your list, followed by food storage. But then, yes, you have to be ready to defend what you have, and I'm a big believer in 308 battle rifles. Uh, I like the HK-91 clones, like the, either like the Vector or the PTR-91 are both quite good. Uh, they use original G3 part sets. Uh, it's just an, all built on an American receiver because of the import restrictions. And they, the original guns were full auto. These are semi-auto only. I think the uh, HK is probably the way to go now, the HK clones, because the magazines and spare parts for so many of the other 308 battle rifles have gotten prohibitively expensive. A spare part set for an M1A is now a six or $700 proposition. But with an HK clone, the, the parts are readily available, and the magazines are just plain dirt cheap. You can get them for as low as a dollar a piece. But you go buying magazines for an M1A, you're talking 20 bucks. For a foul, you're talking 25 bucks, and for an AR-10, as much as 30 dollars. So I, I like the HK clones. Uh, in terms of handguns, I'm a big believer in 45 automatics, and even though I was a real diehard 1911 shooter for many, many years, I finally made the transition, and I'm now recommending either the Glock Model 21, which is a 45 automatic, or the uh, Springfield Armory XD 45. Both of those are high-capacity, 13-round, 45 automatic pistols that are very, very reliable. Beyond that, of course, uh, communications equipment, first aid gear, and all the training to go with it. For all this stuff, don't think just because you bought the gear that you're ready. You really need to train with it, practice with it, know it inside and out. Get the best quality training you can. Uh, go get training at places like Gunsight in Arizona or Front Sight in Nevada or Thunder Ranch in Oregon. There's some really good training out there or work with one of the mobile trainers. Uh, it's really important that you get the training to go with this gear. I, I, I agree with you. Uh, expanding on that, uh, what about the component of waking people up in your area so that they're aware of this threat? Even if they laugh at you up front, then once things unravel, they'll start listening to you. But then there's the catch-22. If they didn't get ready, they're not going to be prepared. They're going to be demanding you take care of them. <laughs> Well, that's why I recommend that people keep a low profile. I'm all for charity, and I think it's, it's really important that people stock up. I have a three-year supply for my family here at the ranch, but I don't look at that as a three-year supply for one family. I look at that as a one-year supply for three families. Be ready to dispense charity, but be ready to do so through an intermediary so you can keep a low profile. You want to dispense that charity through your local church, for example, quietly. You just get together with your church elders and say, okay, I've got some extra food. I want to make it available. I don't want my name to ever be mentioned. That's that's my take on charity. Because you know the old African saying, no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> yes, and the old Japanese proverb, the nail that sticks up gets hammered down. So um, it, it's important that people do stock up in depth and be prepared. And, it, you know, you might want to get set up with a good old-fashioned hand-cranked mimeograph machine and a couple of good old-fashioned manual typewriters, because you may have to make a local newspaper with no power grid out there to, to support you. But you want to be able to, to distribute information in your local community and be ready to do that at, at the drop of a hat. It's old school. What's your gut? 
on d different variants of collapses, you know, running from bad to worse. I mean, obviously, we're in a depression, and it's going to get a lot worse. This is only the beginning, but, I mean, is a 50% yeah. chance this stuff's going to unfold, 80%? Oh, I, I don't like to put percentage chances on things, Alex. All I can say is there's definitely the chance for the worst case, which would be a grid-down collapse. But there's a very high likelihood that we're at, le at the minimum going to see a decades-long depression that'll start out deflationary and then flip over into the nastiest hyperinflation you could imagine. So we're going to get whipsawed by first deflation and then mass inflation. That's, that's probably the most likely course of events. Uh, but that outside chance, that outlier, that black swan, is the possibility of a grid down collapse. And if you're prepared for the absolute worst case, or a grid down collapse, then you can take anything lesser in stride. Don't let me interrupt. Continue with uh, how people get ready. Well, I, I suggest that people uh, study up as best they can. Yeah, I, I like selling copies of my book, but uh, people can get to my blog and dig in through the archives free of charge. Again, it's survivalblog.com. There's thousands and thousands of articles, all available free of charge. Dig in. You have no excuse. I mean, even if you're unemployed and have to use a library computer, uh, you can get on the Internet and dig in and research this stuff. Stock up to the best of your ability, as best as your budget will allow. Team up with like-minded people in your church, in your, your neighbors, your uh, family members, whoever. Um, do so quietly. You don't want to start some enormous local organization and put a target on your back, but very quietly team up with your neighbors, stock up, train, cross-train with the skills that are available within your group. Uh, there's probably someone who's prior service, military. They can teach, uh, you know, small unit tactics and things like NBC. You probably have people that are firefighters or former firefighters that can teach uh, everything from CPR to you know, how to save a, a house from burning down. Uh, even the, the oldest member of your, of your local community that's in your group probably knows how to do home canning and all those old-fashioned skills. And they, again, can cross-train everyone else. It's all a matter of teamwork, and it's a matter that you need to start with prayer. Sit down and pray about it. If you feel convicted, get prepared. Study up, take full advantage of the free resources that are out there, and do the very best you can to prepare for your families. Author of Survivors, uh, James Wesley Rawls, is our guest here for just a few more minutes. He'll be back with us on the InfoWars Nightly News Friday. Uh, I would add I've done deep research on the very best gravity-fed stainless steel water filters out there. And I have chosen the Pro Pure as the best for my family. The others are great as well, but it, it's, it's heads above. And by the way, we do sell those, and then it also supports our news operation when you buy uh, the uh, Pro Pure filters at Infowars.com. That's in the preparedness section. I never even talk about those. I should more because they're, they're amazing. Um, they're bigger, they're better, they're impregnated with uh, colloidal silver, uh, Pro Pure water filters at Infowars.com. Calm. Uh, in, in, in the few minutes we've got left, uh, obviously Friday we'll go through your blog and go through some uh, other areas. Uh, it's just that, um, you know, looking at this, with the whole depression we're seeing, uh, it's good to just have storable food in case things continue to collapse because, because you'll at least have food. Sure. Uh, I often like to say that storage food is not just for the worst case not just for a disaster, it's also for personal disasters. What if you get laid off? You're out of work for six months. Well, food is one item you're not going to have to worry about. You'll always have food on the table. Also, by buying in bulk when you buy your storage food, you're eating cheap. Uh, if you buy rice in little one-pound packages at the store, you're paying five times the price you would pay if you buy it in the 50-pound sacks. So buy the 50-pound sacks, get some five-gallon food-grade plastic buckets, and Bucket it up yourself. It's, it's common sense. It's yeah. a good old-fashioned skill, and it saves money. I have one it's last a win, question. Win, win. It is a win-win-win. I have one last question for you. 
I'm seeing a huge awakening, especially in the military and police. 70 plus percent of donations for all the candidates are to Ron Paul. Do you see the same awakening uh, that I'm seeing? And how does that factor in in, in, in one minute? Oh, absolutely. Uh, if you look at the growth of the preparedness movement, it's basically just doubling each year. Ever since Hurricane Katrina, it's been doubling. And there's a larger and larger percentage of our population that's catching on, that's waking up, and it's getting off their tails and doing something about it. All I can say is keep it up and spread the word. Get people uh, listening to Patriot Radio. Get people teamed up locally um, and train together and stock up the best you can. That's the bottom line because you really can't do too much more. And I think that's why God's given us time so the people like yourself and myself and many others who did have it put on our heart to get ready for this new world order and get laughed at, now it's all happening. Now people are finally listening because, unfortunately, we've been proven right. That's right. Yeah, we're, we're on a slippery slope, and our, our window of opportunity, pardon me for mixing metaphors, but our window of opportunity is closing. So make the very best of the time available to stock up and uh, first, get right with God. Second, get your beans, bullets, and band-aids together. Well, that's what I've tried to explain to people. The, folks, you better not, not take the, the Internet for granted. This show, all this. I mean, look, I moved to the country with a, and getting a deeper well dug and got guns. I mean, I know there's a very good chance this is going to go completely haywire. And if it doesn't, great, I live out in the country. Uh, James, we're going to be talking to you coming up Friday. God bless you. I appreciate all the time. I'll say bye to you during the break, okay? Thanks, Alan. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back. You don't need me to tell you that humanity is in a deep crisis. Everyone can feel it. We know a tectonic struggle is now taking place between the forces of freedom and those who love darkness, bondage, and enslavement. Yes, my friends, evil is rising. But take heart, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Recently, New World Order operative Hillary Clinton admitted they're losing the info war. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. The globalists are scared. They've overreached. The future of the info war is in your hands. Join PrisonPlanet.tv. Download the thousands of special video reports, ebooks, and more, and get them out to everyone you know. Continue to spread the word about the broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and every other globalist propaganda platform. We are going to use their system against them. The info war now goes into high gear.